Boop, 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 boop. Hey. 9-5. Also, it's Friday, so Puppy Sweater Friday. I guess take this off, don't need this. You'll get to see a few videos now with Puppy Sweater Friday. Puppy sweaters don't go away in social isolation. They are not socially isolated. 9-5, uh, we're starting to talk about different vocabulary when it comes to how uh, just different things relate to circles. You know, we have chords and uh, we had radius, the diameter, circumference. Now, a few new vocabulary that is probably brand new to you, but the word isn't. And that word is tangent. There's going to be two different things we're going to talk about today. One of them will be tangent, and we'll get to the other one in a moment. Tangents are straight lines that touch the circle just at one point. And that point is called the point of tangency. As you can see here, there are three things that you're going to want to write down in your book. So a line is a tangent to a circle if and only if it is perpendicular to the radius. So that's something to keep in mind. If I was going to draw a tangent line, this would be my circle. And a tangent line would look something like that. So this would be the line, that point that it touches the circle, which is only one point, is called the point of tangency. The radii, radii, the radius of this circle would be perpendicular to that tangent line. That's what makes a tangent line. There's an infinite amount of tangent lines on a circle. You can make this anywhere on the circle, and the radius would, radius would just follow it around. So this line right here, that is the tangent line. And the point that it touches the circle would be called the point of tangency. That's about it. If two say, so here's two tangent now, if you have two tangent lines and they meet, then they are congruent. So if you have a point out here in space, and you would draw a line, and that would be a point of tangency right here, and you draw another line, and that line's point of tangency is right here. So these are two tangent lines. The distance, so let's call this A, B, and C. A, B would be equal to A, C. So the line from the, the point to the point of tangency is the same on both of those things. That's what that theorem is saying. So for the examples that are illustrating those two points, you are either noticing that we have right angles, so we are going to use right triangle stuff again, or two tangent lines which make congruent segments. For number C, number C, number one, the tangent lines given are equal to each other. We just talked about that. So to solve this, I would set up an equation to set them equal. That's really where the challenge comes in. How do I set up the equations? Are things equal? Do I use the Pythagorean theorem? And as we move on, you'll see there's a little more complicacy. That's not a word, but I'm using it. So solving for x, x is equal to 4. Again, if we have, so we have a tangent line right here. jk is a tangent line. 15 is a radius. So that means this would be a right angle. Again, that's why I'm saying you might use Pythagorean theorem. 20 squared plus 15 squared is equal to x squared. And you would solve that for the Pythagorean theorem. 625 is equal to x squared. So 25, since that's the square root of 625, is equal to x. x is just equal to 12. Again, this is one. We are just saying that those two tangent lines are congruent, those two segments. A right triangle again, and so x is representing the hypotenuse, 36 
plus squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. Simplifying, you have 1,521 equals x squared, square root both sides, so 39 equals x. Don't forget, if the video is moving faster than you want it to move, which it will be, then pause it, write down the notes, then continue. You can always pause. Number five and number six. This is now on page 26. So we're looking at right triangles again. A tangent line, and here, over here, right triangles, and a tangent line. We know that it's a right triangle because the point or the tangent line and the radius form a right angle. That's one of the theorems. So we want to solve for x. This one's a little bit trickier. This 8 is only representing a to b. And so we would also need x or y to a, right? We need the whole thing for the hypotenuse. The radius is 21, so those two red lines would be congruent. Therefore, the entire hypotenuse is 29. You're adding 21 and 8 to get the whole hypotenuse. So the Pythagorean theorem that we'd use, 29 squared minus 21 squared equals x squared. We're subtracting because 29, remember, is my hypotenuse. So if you're given the hypotenuse, subtract. Simplify and solve for x. This is equal to 400 x squared, so x is 20. This one is now a simple Pythagorean theorem. 24 squared plus 17 squared equals x squared. Simplifying 865 square root both sides. Sorry. First idea, tangent lines are lines that touch the circle at one point and are perpendicular to the radius. First idea. Second idea, circumscribed polygons. That means that a circle is inside of a polygon and each side of a polygon is a tangent line, meaning the line, the, the side, touches the circle at one point. So if that circle is inscribed, or excuse me, circumscribed by the polygon, there is six different points that that circle touches the hexagon. No more. I know it's hard to see it, but there is no more. It's just six points. That means if I were to draw a radius from here to here, that would be perpendicular. And that would be true all the way around the polygon. So these are just describing it. Now, another thing to keep in mind, or not to keep in mind, but another thing that's true about this is not only does the polygon that surrounds the circle, so the, cir the polygon is circumscribing the circle, and so not only does it touch the circle at one point, all of those sides are tangent lines, the side or the pieces of the polygon that create the corners of the polygon are all congruent. So what that means is if I have, and I'm using a triangle in this case, but it's true for any polygon, 
If I have a circle that's circumscribed by that triangle, the pieces that create the corners are congruent to each other. So AD is also 12. DB and DE are the same. So that would be 6. And FC and CE are also the same. So the pieces that are next to, next to each other are the same when a circle is circumscribed by a polygon. And that's what this example is down here. So this example goes with this diagram. ABC is circumscribed about O. Find the perimeter. So the perimeter would simply be adding all of the pieces up. Right? That's how you find a perimeter. So this side is 18. This side is 14. And this side is 20. And you would add all of those up. 18 plus 14 plus 20 equals, I didn't find this one, surprisingly enough. Not surprising, I guess, to you. 18 plus 14 plus 20 is 52. So that's the second idea. Circumscribed circles have polygons that are around them that touch, that the circle touches each side of the polygon at one point, creating these congruent pieces of the polygon. So for the exercises, this is on page 27, we have a whole bunch of circles inside polygons. And what I do is I just look for all the congruent pieces. So right now it's just saying find x. So here's x on page 27. Here's x. If this piece is 13, that means this piece is 13. Well, I don't care about over there, so I'm going to now go down here. If this piece is 10, that means this piece is 10. So x is equal to 23. Because it's just 13 plus 10. And over here, if I want to find x, well, this piece is representing x. That means this piece is also x. This piece is 18. That means this piece is also 18. 18 plus x is equal to 26. So x must equal 8. Over here, 8 and 2x are the same two pieces. So 2x is equal to 8. x is equal to 4. A lot of these problems are going to revolve around knowing things or knowing when things are the same. Number 4, I want to find the entire side of this triangle. 6 is the same as this length, so that's 6. And 4 would be the same as this length, so that would be 4. 6 plus 4, so x would equal 10. This length right here is congruent to this length right here, so that's 6. 2 is congruent to this length, so that's 2. 2 plus 6 is 8. So x is equal to 8 in number 5. 9, 5, practice. I'm going to do the first one just so we can have an idea of, uh, and then the rest of it is following what we've already done. So using Pythagorean theorem for these ones, and basically a lot of Pythagorean theorem, and then the inscribed polygon, so setting things equal to each other.
check in with office hours if you have questions on some of those. But we're going to do number 9 and 10 just so you know what this is saying. It says copy each figure. You don't have to copy it. You have it. in. You, if you printed this out, you already have it. And then draw the common tangents. So that means what lines, if I were to draw next to these circles, would touch each circle once. Number nine, if I drew a line right here, this circle and this circle would be touched once by that tangent line. Therefore, that tangent line is common between them. So that's one common tangent line. Here's another one. And then this figure also has one more common tangent line. So a line that touches both of them, it would go between them and touch that point once for the circle. Number 10, there is no single line that you could draw and it would touch each circle once. Any point, any tangent line that I draw on the little circle would also would hit the big circle twice and that wouldn't be common. So there would be no common tangents here. So this would be none. That's what I mean by common tangent lines. It's a tangent line that is true for both circles or two circles at the same time. So this is the practice for 9-5. Check Google Classroom so you know when that's due. Okay, go to work. I gotta find it. Oh, there it is.